is there potentially a bell cow running back? Is he one question part two question being undervalued? Nobody. What, what's the ADP on him, Chris? And go to Lauren first, but miles Sanders just came off an RB one performance after scoring zero touchdowns. He went back the other way, scored 11 goes to Carolina in front of Chuba Hubbard and people like, I mean, there's not a significant threat. I mean, looks like Sanders might be in store for bell cow roll question mark. Can't go any higher, so you're gonna have to answer the question. Oh, Lord, I already <laughs> see Lord. I already see her rolling her eyes and huffing and puffing. Doesn't like her. Oh, so Miles Sanders and I don't get along. Like not personally. <laughs> I don't know him personally. Just what's his ADP, you know, Meanie? From from the it's fantasy. Fifty six. It's after Aaron Jones and before J.K. Dobbins. RB. Oh no, no, that's too high. <laughs> <laughs> it's high. This time last year, I would, was I would take him over Aaron Jones. I here's, think I'm over well, Aaron Jones. Yeah, and here's here's the thing. Um, as much as I want to poo-poo on <laughs> Miles Sanders, which I frequently do. Um, hold on, hold on, time out. This comes from old it's poo-poo, not poo-poo on. You're not you're not oh, don't whatever. On, <laughs> but well, I didn't on say I didn't ahead. say it the other way. Whatever. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, throw garbage on him uh because I actually do think that this is a, yeah, that there you go. My favorite sound yes. ever. Yes. Um, this is actually a good place for him in terms of fantasy, and I think also in terms of real football too. But there is the opportunity for him to have bell cow work. I am curious to see how he can be utilized outside of the Eagle system, outside of what they had with Doug Peterson, who did use him in a bell cow role for I think want to say like four or five weeks, meaning if I'm correct, like three years ago. But they lost, mm -hmm. so they went back to the running back by committee and then started winning. So is that a is that a knock on Miles Sanders? or is that a knock on the offense and Miles Sanders? So we'll see what he's able to do in Carolina. But just like you brought up, he doesn't have a ton of competition that's going to be taking away massive amounts of touches. So on volume alone, I think that he is going to have a, a productive season. Do I think he's being overvalued because of this? I probably won't draft him unless he drops significantly for me to feel comfortable with it. Really? Um, yeah, I just, I just don't know. It's one of those weird, like, Juju things. Not Juju Smith-Schuster, but like, I, no, I can't. It it just feels wrong to me. Now, if I, if someone else wants to draft him at his ADP, go for it because they might have a little bit more faith in him and in that new system. Which, if he does well, good for you. But I don't know. I just I don't trust him. I, I don't trust him. Not, again, not as a person. <laughs> like I don't know him personally, <laughs> but I'm talking about my fantasy football productivity and consistency. I just don't see a huge ceiling because of the Carolina offense, but I do see consistency. So I I guess. I could be talked into it, but I would probably have to be very this is, drunk. This is if your I'm boy, be him. And and now that I have George yeah. Michael in my head, um, because gotta have faith. Gotta have faith. <laughs> is, faith, faith. There you go. Baby. Is this, is this uh are you you coming back around? This is your former former boy. I your yeah, I mean former leader. I've always thought he's a really good running back. I just uh, I like to to Lauren's point. I mean, nobody really views him as a bell cow back and not to say that he can't be one, but he's never really given that opportunity. Um, man, he's done some they great did, things. And they lost. Eh, mm. I mean, is that he, is that the chicken and the egg argument, though? <laughs> like, I mean, last year it couldn't have been any better for this guy. I mean, he was a steal in drafts. If you took him in the eighth round and then when he and then he went on. I forget he was like on some NBC show and the reporter, I forget the reporter's name, asked him like, you know, about his season and what to expect from him. And then like fantasy came up and he's like, yo, don't, don't draft me in fantasy, you know, uh, because <laughs> the way that we that. run our offense, I'm not going to get a ton of touches. I may not be the goal line back. I may be taken out in red zone packages, which is all the case. Nobody drafted him in fantasy. He went at that point from an eighth round to a 10th round pick. And people are actually taking Kenneth Gainwell over him. He ends up finishing with almost 1300 yards, 11 rushing touchdowns. He was a steal. If you had him mm -hmm. like him and Josh Jacobs were the biggest steals last year. And if you went zero RB and you ended up with those guys, you definitely went on a run in your fantasy football league. But I, well, here's the whole course. Was cool. Oh, man let, me, man, let me let me tie this on to there because we're talking about Miles Sanders also during his rookie season was heavily used at the passing game because remember was. this was like grass. took over for Barkley. Like, let's not ignore what Sanders did in college because of how good Barkley was. He kind of got overshadowed. Right. And then we saw yeah. during his rookie season what he could be. But meaning, you know, this more than anybody. We've talked about this on the show for years. The Eagles became disenfranchised with this passing game and they really kind of watered him down and then yeah. almost eliminated him. I think, what was he, 20 receptions last year? Yeah. yeah it, it was actually a very high reception rate 
but not a lot. Mm-hmm. Do you think Carolina can switch that back? Because that's the true definition of a bell cow that we want for fantasy. Right. We want 20 touches. Yeah, and I'm not totally sure um, if they will go that route. I think he is more than capable, as you mentioned, in his rookie season, 50, 50 catches. I mean, he was one of four backs at that time in his rookie year to have over 4.5 yards per carry, you know, 500 receiving yards, 800 rushing yards, and 50 grabs. Like, he was in CMC, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara territory, and then they just took that away from him. But I think he can. He really struggled two years ago with drops, and that's when they drafted Kenneth Gainwell and they brought back Boston Scott. But I think he can get to 30 grabs. Like, is that super exciting? No, but it would be the second most he's ever had in his career. <laughs> I think he can get to be a thousand yard back. I think he can be the goal line back. I think he's much better than Chuba Hubbard. I think he's definitely yeah. going to be the lead there. So I'm in. I think he's a decent RB too, but it is a downgrade. It's like it kind of evens out, right? You leave arguably the best offensive line, best rushing team in football the last two years to a team with a rookie quarterback so many questions offensively they're not going to be a top 10 offense they're gonna be a top five offense but well, he should the touch the ball 20 this. times a game i'd be shocked that, if he didn't. that's my volume uh, argument you, so yeah it's kind of like oof. well i mean in the volume argument and so that you brought up something meaning is that uh immediately i don't remember who tweeted it out but they said the average wins for a rookie quarterback is what, like five and change. It was like five point something. And that's when I went out there and immediately smashed the under the Carolina's over under is like what, seven and a half wins or something like that. It's yeah, pretty they're, aggressive. They're for, yeah. So that's part of it too. Like just baking that in is like, how many leads do they have? Like how much work do they have where it's not passing because of that? So 